Okay, we are live. Will you mute me? Oh no, yeah. I'll mute myself. Yeah, oh yeah. In high definition, one hour earlier, this oh is Fox Wilmington News at 10. The families of our Marines and sailors, that our hearts go out to We appreciate your sacrifice. And we'll do all we can to continue to support you. New details in a training accident. Several Camp Lejeune Marines killed and families in mourning after a training session in Nevada. Yeah, now and it feels like winter. Spring uh, may officially start tomorrow, but it won't feel much like it around here, at least for a while anyway. Oh, wow. We begin tonight with details that are new at 10. The Wilmington Fire Department investigating a case of arson tonight. And it involves a van being used by the police department's troubled vice and narcotics unit. Oops. Investigators believe someone intentionally set it on fire early Sunday morning. The van was going to be used in some sort of undercover investigation, but PD officials wouldn't specify what kind. Fire crews found the van fully engulfed in the parking lot of the senior center at Shipyard and College. That's directly across the street from the PD's Southeast Command Center. Now, the Vice and Narcotics Unit, you may remember, is under investigation by the SBI. Every member involved in a controversial prostitution sting has been reassigned by the police chief. And the PD is dealing with uh, other issues, too, along with that uh, botched prostitution sting that spawned the SBI investigation. There are also problems with writing out racial profiling paperwork. The law requires police officers to submit paperwork about racial profiling after most traffic stops. But the police department admits, the officials in the police department admit, they've only sent 32% of the required forms last year. The chief tells us he's taking a special interest to make sure all forms are submitted in the future. Our, our folks are busy out there. I mean, and, and uh, it's, you know, that some of them dropped the ball. I mean, there's no question on it, you know. And and we're you know we're holding people accountable now. I mean, they're not they're not they're not getting a free ride, you know. So if they're not they're not doing what they need to do, they're going to be dealt with. Now, according to state law, not complying could result in the loss of grant funding. In the past two months, the chief says between 70 and 80 percent of the required forms were submitted to the state. And that's not the only law enforcement group dealing with some internal troubles tonight. A sheriff's deputy in Pender County has been charged with DWI. There were several calls to 911 this morning saying a marked patrol car had crashed into another car on Highway 17 outside of Jacksonville. Minutes later, troopers pulled over Deputy William, William Pallack. He was charged with driving while impaired, along with a couple of other charges. He was also fired from the job today. Now, this is the second time a Pender deputy has been caught under the influence while on the clock. Deputy Nick Carter was suspended without pay back in January after officials found alcohol in his system during a law enforcement class. It's with a heavy heart that I stand before you today to share with you the following information about the incident that occurred last night that killed seven of our brave Marines and injured seven other service members with the 2nd Marine Division. And we do have an update just into our newsroom minutes ago. An eighth Camp Lejeune Marine has died from the accident in Nevada. They were killed when a mortar round exploded during mountain training exercises. This happened around 10 o'clock last night at the Hawthorne Army Depot in rural Nevada, about 130 miles southeast of Reno. We know that six others were also hurt. Well, most Americans now believe the Iraq War was a mistake. A new CNN poll released today shows 56% of us believe that. Only a quarter think it was a victory, which is actually down 5% from 2011. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the invasion of Iraq. During the initial invasion, public support was high. All right, local school leaders are reacting to possible changes for teachers in North Carolina. Yeah, a new bill could do away with the current system of tenure in the public schools. News at 10 reporter Ben Powell got some reaction from inside New Hanover County's school system tonight. Ben? Well, yeah, John, under Senator Leader Phil Berger's proposal, experienced, well-performing teachers could be put onto four-year contracts, while teachers who aren't getting the job done would be on shorter, on shorter deals. The bill allows for continued development of pay for performance rules that were put in place during the last legislative session. Senator Berger says the idea is to have incentives in place for teachers who excel. The bill also would include other changes too to the core curriculum and end of year testing program. 
John Wellmers, who oversees human resources for the county schools, says teachers may have a hard time getting used to all the changes. Teachers are going to be very well aware that their contracts are now going to be based on their performance and also their, their pay. Uh, their pay can go up significantly if they're doing an outstanding job, and they can be on a different contract or a lower contract if they're not. So it, those things will change significantly. Now, keep this in mind, this is just the first step in Senator Berger's bill. He introduced a similar bill last year in this, that passed the Senate but died in the House. We'll keep an eye as this one progresses in Raleigh. Reporting live in New Hanover County, Ben Powell, Fox Wilmington News at 10. All right, thanks, Ben. Changes ahead for parents and students in Brunswick County. Schools will be going back to staggered starting times next year. The school board made that decision today. And the next step is to survey parents on which schedule they prefer. The same plan drew some protest, if you remember, when the board tried it a couple of years ago. But with the chance to save about a million dollars and use that money for school safety, Leaders say it's well worth it. We found it necessary to get the SRO in all of our elementary schools, and uh, we wanted to identify a funding stream to cover that each year in the future uh, without having to uh, trade teaching positions to, to do that. The goal is to finish surveying parents in time for the board to make a final decision by its May meeting. New Hanover County school leaders are putting a Band-Aid on overcrowding at an elementary school. It is a short-term solution for Wrightsville Beach Elementary. The school board approved a three-year plan to keep using a church for classes and two mobile units on the school campus. Redistricting may also still be on the table. As for the long term, the school is one of many hoping to, re to renovate if school leaders can get a bond issue on the ballot. All right, time for your first alert forecast and time to take a look at the bus stop forecast as you're thinking about getting your kids ready for school in the morning. Prepare for the return of colder weather on this, well, will be the first day of spring. It actually starts in a little over nine hours from now. A chilly start to the day, uh, partly cloudy skies, about 40 degrees. And i got to tell you, some of the latest computer models are coming in now with a little more cloud cover and maybe even a small shower chance as we head towards tomorrow afternoon. Right now, we're going to keep it mostly cloudy, but we have lowered the high just a little bit. 57, about all we'll be able to manage as we head into tomorrow afternoon. I got to tell you, the temperatures are going to get even colder in the days ahead. We're going for 53 now for the high on Thursday, and it looks like temperatures staying in the 50s for highs as we head towards the weekend. Not exactly how you envision uh, spring starting, maybe even some precipitation by the weekend. We'll have the complete first word forecast coming up in a few moments. A gunman on a college campus is stopped before going on a shooting spree. Who stopped him might surprise you. And some roadkill takes revenge. Wait till you see what happened when a man thought he was going to have deer meat for dinner. Oh, you got the if you're, oh, I wish people were watching us on YouTube, like, um, our Time Warner folks are having a hard time. It has something to do with it. Are having a hard time, Warner? <laughs> really, John? Sure. Well, isn't it the, well, he said it's analog. The analog but, but there's no sound. Users, people who are watching us on the non-digital cable. But why do we have, have, they have no sound? Signal? I analog, analog cable. Analog cable. Yeah, so oh, it's a lower okay. cable. Yeah, people who are not My watching us on the digital cable. I have no sound on Channel 9 because I'm, right. I'm analog. Right. So is yeah. Mother. She called me mm -hmm. up. She said, can you hear what they're saying on TV? Hmm. And I said, well, I haven't muted, so no. <laughs> <laughs> How many people are watching you on the analog channel, though? Well, two. Uh, well, we got Linda. Yeah, I mean, up in our bedroom upstairs in, in our house, it's uh, not digital. It's the lowest tier that Time Warner Cable offers. It's the grandma tier. Yeah. You got it. Well, I don't even I mean, have literally. cable anymore, so I don't know what that means. Where do you get your signal from? I don't get a signal. I cut the cord. I'm totally cable free. Well, and how do you watch us? I come to work. So you don't get cable off? <laughs> cheap thing. Well, you know what though? I don't believe in I don't believe in paying for it anymore. They just take and take and take and take and take from you. That's it. 
everything now you can go on you can go on uh, well, I don't know what to say about that you can't watch us you can go to Chrome and watch everything online Chrome get out of here get out of here get out of here I'm telling you that's the new gen that's the new generation of people they don't want to spend a hundred dollars on cable and then spend two hundred dollars on their phone and then spend two hundred dollars on their car payment a hundred dollars on their insurance <laughs> Yeah, but not everybody can get by on reruns of Doctor Who. <laughs> Hold on. Well, I pay fourteen dollars for my cable. <laughs> fourteen dollars. That's, mm -hmm. that's like my tax. Fifteen. Is that is that is that uh what is that like? Is that, is that some kind of government program for cheap cable? I've never heard of that. No, it's the um, it's just just broadcast cable. It's 22 stations, actually. You're watching Fox Wilmington News at 10, really? one hour earlier. I did that battle This is a new video right now of officers responding to the room of a uh, University of Central Florida student found no. dead with guns and explosives in his room. Police say he had planned a shooting attack after he pulled a fire alarm in the dorm Monday, but soon changed his mind and took his own life. There were uh, unopened mail packages uh, containing magazine clips, a tactical sling, and a shooting training DVD. I don't think so. I don't think that you uh, acquire 210 round magazines and numerous 22 uh, uh, capacity magazines and that you purchase a thousand rounds of ammunition and that you purchase the 45 ammunition. I don't think you just do that as a joke. I've never seen that happen as a joke. Uh, police say they are going over the students' computers to gather more evidence. Yeah, and university officials also say they have heightened security on campus. Things are all clear after reports of a gunman on the campus of a university in Indianapolis. Still no word on whether or not a shooter was actually at the Indiana University School of Medicine. But we do know that evening classes were held as normal. A woman reported seeing a man with a long gun in a parking lot near campus around lunchtime. There were also two other similar calls as well. Once again, nobody found by law right. enforcement on that campus. All right, looking to our outside, this is uh, downtown Wilmington, uh, 12 minutes after 10 on a Tuesday night. Downtown, that's where the temperatures are going to. Going to be pretty chilly for the rest of the week. Meteorologist Eric Davis has the forecast coming up. Downtown. Okay, so what was the thing? Um, John can answer this. What? Staggered start times. Danielle wants to know what are staggered start times. Well, um, elementary schools would start on Sunday morning, middle schools mm -hmm. Tuesday afternoon, and then high schools late Friday afternoon. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I was like, really? Sunday? I don't remember that. <laughs> basically, what it is is there, there are two going to be two options, one with the high school starting early, I guess between 7.50 and 8.10, and then the, the middle schools, 8.10, 8.30, uh, elementary, 8.30 to 8.50, and then that way they can save money on gas and transportation by using the same buses over and over again. Mm -hmm. They don't have to get more buses out to make the same routes uh, all the time. So they're going to decide to uh, whether to um, which way to go. They're going to survey all the parents. They're going to give them the two scenarios. Whichever one wins, that's the one they're going to go with. They said, and the, th and the they money they're going to save, about a million dollars, 970-some thousand, I guess, they're going to put right into paying the SROs for the four elementary schools and everything else like that, which is the extra um, expense they're incurring after the Sandy Hook shooting, which when they put that into play. How big are the, are the staggered times? Because I feel like in my, when I was in school, I felt like we did staggered start times between the high school and the middle school. And yeah, we did all the time. We yeah, did it every I don't year. know why it's... Um, we did it every year. It was like you drop off the little kids first. And then and you go and you pick up the middle. Yeah, the elementary know. started earlier. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. did. Um, I don't know. Is that yeah. something? But that's what they're planning on. That's what they decided today in Brunswick County. When I was in school, after we trudged five miles in the snow, that's we all started. Uphill both ways. Day. Uphill both ways? Both ways. Yeah. Both ways. In Miami. Feature that. Uphill and in the snow. <laughs> yeah. 
What? I had to ride the bus until I was in ninth grade. That was. Really I cool. never rode a school bus ever. <sighs> I got. I did. Picked on. I got beat up outside the school bus. I, I was. I was never. Year. I was never a cool enough this kid to have people. My mom picked me up or dad. Yeah, so I had to pass. truck it home with the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I was in ninth grade and I got kicked off because I accidentally punched a sixth grader. Uh, how do you accidentally punch someone? Well, he was like one of those, he was a little kid. I mean, he didn't seem like a little kid at the time. He was just in, he kept getting in my face and like doing, <laughs> like, like this. But I kind of like punched him. I don't know, I got in trouble. He was a little kid compared to you? <laughs> well, I was in ninth grade. He was, in, he was a big sixth grader. Well, we had neighborhood schools, so I could walk. I, I could Me walk too. to every school I went to. I could walk to my elementary school. Mm -hmm. I could walk to my middle school for the first two years, and then we went to a middle school somewhere else. But I had to drive and take a bus to high school, or take a bus first two years and then drove to high school. Hey, Anthony, how does this capture app work? Like I see. Oh well, you take the picture. But how? Like that. You do so there's that? a little button on the bottom. Oh, no, you got to oh, the app first. I got it. Oh, okay. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of the sound effect with it like that. I think that's I think that cheapens the hangout to have a sound effect with the full screen. I think it cheapens the hangout to have a picture of me in my road. <laughs> I, mean, I, it, I, I would much rather be able to do it um, on the sly because, like, what's the point? It's like so distracting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it'd be nice if you could just take pictures of people, but if, if every time you hear it, it's going to disrupt well, the whole thing. I don't know if yeah, it goes like into the. I don't think it goes into the HOA. Is consuming, though. <laughs> John just shoved that chair in me. Did you guys see that? <laughs> So mean. Kelly, are you going to talk about what's news after this block? I don't know. You're going to ask me questions. I'm just the interview guest. Yes. It's <laughs> your show. We're going to get you your own show. I don't have a Raycom Kelly, contract. Kelly, where yet. are you? <laughs> well, we would pay you. I'm at the shop. Five dollars. Kelly, who's a printing press behind you? That yeah, is no a one. 1912 letter press. Yeah. <laughs> John would say, trust me, that's your gig of being Dothan. Though? <laughs> you can only see your lips. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Wait, so what is that? Is that Billy, are you selling Billy that? Billy apparently bought a new car. <laughs> That's already sold. Billy, is that your new car? Cool, dude. Yep. <laughs> it's a 19... John, you can appreciate this. It's a 1912 letterpress. 1912 From your era. From your... <gasps> I almost oh. forget that. <laughs> Well, the thing about it is, is that I recognized it. No, you don't. I most certainly did. What did I say to you? How did I didn't you hear it. That? I said, is that an old printing press behind you? Yes, it is. Yeah, but you knew I, that. I told you that. I'm going to run it for you in a minute. Ooh, that is cool. pretty okay. cool. It's like a, a steam engine when it's running. But it shakes the whole floor and everything. Well, run it if you want to. We're just in weather, and then we've got a couple stories to read. Oh, you might want to hear these stories, though. They're pretty good. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Is this the man who tried to tie the deer to the tree or something? We're going to have a much better chance of rain. 40% chance of showers on Saturday, 60% on Sunday. Sunday could be a real washout, a height of 55, and you're going to have to wait till Monday before you see your temperatures return to your 60s. Sunday, the highlight day or the low light day, depending on how you look at it, <laughs> with uh, an area of low pressure this moment. just to our south, and the rain, again, could be pretty widespread and heavy on Sunday. Well, with the uh, NCAA tournament coming up, good day to stay inside and watch all hoops. I'm giving you an excuse. There you go. That's the way to look at it. You don't have to go anywhere and do anything. That's right. All right. Take a look at tonight's Fox Hot Shot. Proudly perched. Randy Schubert got us this picture. Take a look at how majestic that bird looks there. Uh, Randy uploaded it to us on foxwilmington.com. Clicking on Hot Shots. We saw his great picture decided to let you see it. And that's what we do, sharing your pictures. I think there was right an accident in front Wilmington of my house. 10. Now, we want to share this with you, too. Tell so Fox we will to no in Hanover County. Watch this. Katie oh, Von Der Rau, 15 years old, plays on Hoggard High School's JV soccer team. It's yep, still that's snowing right. now. She kicked a soccer ball into the basketball hoop. 
Oh, I love that. Video on YouTube. You can see her kicking it right through the hoop, 60 feet away. <laughs> Actually, part of her homework assignment, it took her nearly 150 tries, but she finally got it done. Mm. I was really happy and excited because I could stop doing it, and it was really cool to actually make it in. Uh, we tried to get her to do it today. Uh, she tried it a couple more times, <laughs> and here we go. And There you go. Rain on that parade. Oh, Rain on that no. parade. But you know what? <laughs> it's like on YouTube. The, It'll like look different. The cheer, like the cheerleader who did the flip and tossed it over her head and hit the basket. Oh, gosh. She's got it on tape for everyone to see. So, she Katie, does. congratulations. She's got a pretty good kick. Yeah. <laughs> she plays on that soccer team. Wow. Look for her on the varsity pretty soon. Good for her. Yeah. Now, more incredible video for you to see. Take a look. Michigan right now. Yeah, police responded uh, to a surprising call this morning. Oh, goodness. Oh, gracious. Oh. oh. Well, officers opened the trunk of a car and you saw it. Out came a deer. Police were initially responding to a report of a man in a suspicious vehicle behind a hotel. The car owners told police that he hit the deer by accident and planned to take it home for food. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be going home no. at this point in time. He was a little hungry. A little started, startled there, but uh, deer got away. Apparently Good for fine. the deer. Good yeah. for the deer. How about this? An unexpected suspect. A little bony suspect. deer. A home robbery. A pregnant mm -hmm. lady caught on camera by the home surveillance system in Oregon. A woman knocked on the door. When no one answered, she broke in. Take a look through the front window. Oh, wow. And then she took off in the red convertible that's parked in the driveway. She just decided she was going to go for a little ride. <laughs> she really did a good job of getting that window out. Why do people think that's a okay, good idea? Check this out. A nonprofit group has decided to paint a house in Kansas in gay pride colors. And um, what's notable about this, the house is right across the street from the Westboro Baptist Church. <laughs> so that is, of course, the church that often stages anti-gay protests at military funerals. And the nonprofit group Planting Peace bought that house. This home is just a symbol. You know, our goal is to just have the symbol, uh, this home, to be a symbol. Yeah, that's of not antagonistic uh, at all. And to be, uh, and to be prideful, and that's and that's pretty much what it comes down to. And so far, the church has not. It's a nice paint job, though. On that house, you know, I saw that online today, and it's I thought pretty. it was. Uh, I mean, they really paint that thing really had well. Feelings with the Westboro Baptist Church because you used to work out that way. Right? Yeah, I did, and they went to everything. They mm -hmm. actually they come out so much that people pretty much ignore them. Yeah. You know, really. But when they came out here, it was a big deal. They just passed the state law here in North Carolina to fight those guys so they can't hang around a funeral. Yeah, I guess they guys are just terrible. UNCW did some talking today with their bats. Oh, really? I've always wanted them to protest Pirates. something near here so I can mess with them. The highlights. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what they want. They want to be arrested. They want to be on the media. It's, you know, people sort of feed into their game by doing that. So they were on TV tonight. Yeah, there you go. That's part of their marketing plan. Absolutely. Ooh. So, Billy, how many miles a gallon that new car of yours got? Man, that thing must have 10 million impressions on it. <laughs> I'll sell it to you. That's an antique. Where where are you? Where is that in your garage? No, it's my parents' old print shop. From uh, oh. we bought this thing back in '83. And now are you we're selling. selling it though? Aren't you selling? Mm -hmm. it? Yep. Oh, Got to. Nowhere to put it. Mm. Relocating. Sad, though. Oh yeah, I'm I'm totally attached to this thing. I'm the only one that's ever run it in in 30 years. Mm. Well, you beat it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? I didn't hear. You said you're the only one that's ever run it. I said I bet you beat it right now. It's been so it's so old. It's mm. a joke. It's a joke. It didn't go very far. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. So so how long? So it dates back to what year? It was made in 1912 with a few uh, aftermarket things in the early 1900s. <laughs> and what's the last year? That, what's the last year that it actually worked? Oh, it runs right now. Oh, it does. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it runs right now, and it, I mean it's irreplaceable. You can still. Uh, it's the way the printing used to work. Yeah. You know, and now you have the offset sheet flies through the press and. Uh, <laughs> It doesn't. This thing actually makes an impression with it whenever you uh, print with it. 
Mm -hmm. But we mostly use it for die cutting and things like that. What's I'll show it to you. Cool what's die cutting? Die cutting, like uh, yeah. whenever you see paper that's cut in funny shapes, then uh, oh, okay. the only way to do that is to stamp it with a blade. How it's crazy is it that it still I works? Like, I like history. Yeah, that's great. Well, it's indestructible. I mean, there's nothing to break. Well, it's got many parts, right? So technically it mm -hmm. could break. Yeah, but they're all, I mean, it weighs 3,000 pounds. 3,500 pounds or something that's not like uh, today's stuff that'll bend or break. Nothing on it to wear out. You just oil the right spots and it runs forever. And what's the history with it? Well, I don't know where we got it because it was 83. I was just a kid. But, um, they I've got been the Yeah. It was that era, though. 1912. Well, no, that's not that era. It was the first printing press. Um, well, Ben Franklin did a lot of printing, but I think it predated him. Who was Eli Whitney? What did he do? Cotton gin. Cotton gin. Yeah. Uh, probably the Gutenberg Bible. Would have Gutenberg. Been printed. Gutenberg, been right. Print, but it Gutenberg, might have Heidelberg, a lot of German engineering. This is uh, Chandler and Price. <laughs> but I'm going to crank it up. <clears throat> that would look good in a museum or something, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a museum like of history or the National Printing Press Museum, isn't that in the Midwest somewhere? I don't know. It kind of looks like one of those stationary bicycles. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it? Like a little... Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could find a better uh, vantage point to show you all the moving parts. Elevated. The noise is, is enough. running. No, that's just me turning it over. Now it's working. That is pretty cool. Can you hear it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can mute it if it gets too loud. You know, there's sports right now, Billy. We're we're watching huh? we're watching the printing press now. Yeah, but can you print something with it now? Like, what are you doing when you're running? Or is it just on? What happened to our sound? Did he mute himself? Yeah, he probably muted himself. Looks like it's printing something. No. Yeah. <clears throat> we are just too cool. Who else in the world but us gets to see this? Nobody. Not very many. I'm telling you. This is a special kind of hangout. It certainly is. Hey, do any of you guys use clout as a social media measuring tool? Um, sort of, but I don't put much stock in it because I think I'm more popular than what it says. Oh, no, they just they just gave me a free Walkman. So I don't Ooh. understand. Yeah, they send you a free Walkman, and then you tweet about how that Walkman if you like it or not, and if you're one of their top influencers, you get a free waterproof version of the same Walkman. I'll see if I get it. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then Red Bull sent me a perk for a Red Bulletin magazine, which I said, you know, I'll take it. It's free. Did you get the clout cards yet? I don't know what that is. Oh, you get these little business cards. They're free. 
Oh no, I wouldn't probably pass around clout cards. I'd rather just spread my. Oh clout no, that you get a you can customize it to what you want, and it just has a little clout logo on the back. Back in the bottom, I, do, I might would do that too. Back in the bottom right. Check this out. It's Billy in his printing press. Yeah, I saw some of those. I was watching the video kind of out of the corner of my eye when I was on there. All right, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn on the vacuum, and it'll pull one of those sheets from the top, and stamp it uh, with a die, and then it'll drop it off at the bottom. It's Billy Stanley's family printing press from 1912. Oh well, I thought something was on a stationary bike. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. It looks like it's yellow. Are you using yellow and blue? The paper's blue. Oh, the paper's blue. Money? What are you printing? It's not yeah. printing. It's actually not printing. It's um, taking the blue sheet and it's hitting it with a die that you might be able to see in here. Mm -hmm. You see the die in there with the rubber little pads around it? Yeah. Is the is the rubber pad yellow or is the die yellow? It still works better well, than the printers in our newsroom. The paper that we're stamping is blue. See it? It starts up top and it'll be taken down to the impression area and then be delivered back over here in this tray at the bottom. So I'm going to turn it on. Wait, so didn't we, did we just say it was Gutenberg the first, or is that the guy? Yeah. Was the, right, right. Was the impressive guy. He's Gutenberg. Well, he was in the... It's amazing. That looks like a spider. Right now, baby. Yeah. It's working right now. Yeah. You can see it working. So how do you even get that ma like maintenance? Like, what do you uh, do? You, you do it yourself. <laughs> Okay, so here's another question. Who yeah, wants to buy that? I mean, not being specific, like who... Well, there's a lot of nostalgia in things that are printed with this. Uh, there's still a, a demand for it. Because it, it's really, I mean, it's, it can't be made obsolete. It's an impression. You know, uh, it's not like a modern press that just rolls a roller across and the ink sticks to the paper. This actually, uh, you would uh, ink up some dyes which would stamp it onto the paper. Got that, that robot arm up there. Yeah. It's so weird. It looks like a spider at work. It's just neat. Yeah, it's really cool. Man. Are you getting rid of it because it's just obsolete? or? No, no. We're getting rid of it because we're relocating and... Um, it's my mother's print shop. We're, re we're relocating her, and uh, it has to go somewhere. It won't fit. Oh, I see. Will, will somebody want to buy it? I guess. I guess there would oh, be yeah. people that would die for oh, you. Oh yeah, I got all kinds why of offers. Could you, why could you not just leave it in the print shop as just a relic? Well, this we're getting out of this building, so that's the deal. Well, will it not fit in the new building? No, nowhere to put it. Um, you mm -hmm. have to have a. Concrete slab to put it on. It's thirty-five hundred pounds. So. Right. It shakes the. It's shaking this whole place right now. It's shaking mm -hmm. the concrete floor underneath it. Mm. So it has to have a solid place. But somebody in Wilmington's going to put it to good use. In Wilmington. Mm -hmm. He has a number of smaller ones, and oh, he was really? just, he was all over this thing. He was just all fascinated with it. Because it was a big, modern, more modern improvement on his, on his if you can does believe he, that. Does he have them in his house? No, he has a print shop. It's good for wedding invitations, things like that, where you can actually feel the ink in, embossed into the paper. Who is the guy in Wilmington? Steve something or other, I can't remember. I got his business card in my pocket, I can't get to it. Anyway, there's your history lesson. Yeah, that's great. You know, the thing for 1910, that was pretty cool technology. The way it could automatically reaches and doesn't mess up the paper and pulls it off. Yeah, well, that part was actually aftermarket, probably the 40s. It was uh, 1912 was the base part that does the impression. and the, You would actually hand feed that back in 1912. Put your hands right there. I'd love to see how those things would work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Do a Fiatra story on it. Oh yeah. When did you sell? It? When are you selling it, Billy? When? Yeah. Oh, it's already sold. But can't? Is it too late? First for us guy to do a that came. The first guy that came wanted it. Oh really? Oh, a story? Mm -hmm. I don't know. He has a whole print shop full of them. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Here in town? I mean, yeah. here in the area? Yeah, there in Wilmington. 
That's kind of neat. I want to yeah. do that. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, you can't promote another guy's business when your Google Hangout friend is showing you his printing press. <laughs> no, he's a great guy. We're not going to be in the letterpress business. This is a unique niche. It's very cool. I think so. Yeah. I'd be interested to see who, who, who that is. So when you can get to your pocket, let us know. Yeah. Kelly, in the meantime, did anything happen today that we should know about? Nothing? When's your show coming up? Uh, it airs Friday nights at 9 o'clock for a half hour. Okay, so what are you going to talk about? The governor's budget, what lawmakers think about it, what the reporters think about it, the teen tanning bed uh, ban, uh, habitual DWIs, and a whole bunch of little 30-second uh, blips and blurbs about other stuff that they are trying to pass. Um, what's the latest with habitual DWIs? They, if you get three DWIs in 10 years, you're an habitual DWI offender and you go to prison for a while. But if you get three, w, three DWIs over 11 years, you're not considered a habitual DWI person. So they're trying to make it so it's three DWIs over the course of your life. And the third one would trigger this special felony distinction that would put you behind bars no matter when it happened. What? Yeah. I mean, that seems, I mean, I've never had a DWI, and I am a firm believer of not drinking and driving. Um, but three in your lifetime, and then you suddenly are a felony? I mean, what if you're like one of these kids who like make mistakes when you're like 16 and you get, I mean, I guess those are MIPs. I don't really know how that works, actually. But. That is how, that's how the current law is, and, um, and people brought that to their attention that you've got holes in your logic of your bill. Your bill makes sense except for a few holes, which is you get, you get DWI at 18 and 22, and then you're 62 and get a DWI. But I think the bill doesn't go back in time like that. It starts fresh. So with people um, getting a DWI after the law takes effect, then you get your first one, your second one, your third one. So anybody who would face this law would face the lifetime cap of three DWIs. You know, everybody starts fresh once it becomes law. They won't go back and grandfather it. Yeah, but even so, there will be kids who make mistakes. I mean, I don't know if oh, it's yeah. like if kids are the biggest ones. I, I, that was just the first thing that came to my mind. But it seems like three DWIs in a lifetime. I mean, three of anything in a lifetime is like doable. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not. Yeah, it is again, very I'm, doable. Yeah. If you have an alcohol problem and you're addicted, you could probably get two back to back. Yeah. And that happens. I've heard of that happening. And. Um, but that third one's a doozy. So what happens if, so the way the bill's written, so what do they want to happen if you get, you know, the special special felony kind of distinction? Do you go to jail or prison? Uh, yeah, you can go to jail. You almost certainly lose your license for a really long time. And um, what happened, the, the genesis of the bill was a fella had two DWI convictions and went to prison for 40 years. He got out after 17 years. Upon getting freedom, he got a third DWI, and they couldn't do anything to him again. It was like a fresh start. So they got – they said, well, this can't happen because you can lock somebody up for longer than the term of your DWI habitual status, so you can get out and get your third DWI after you get out of jail. He did it. Hmm. A lot of times, one isolated case will result in a state law. Who it's wrote amazing. that bill or who's sponsoring the bill? Uh, Pat Hurley, who is out your way up in like Carteret County, is behind it. A guy named Representative Nathan Basker, Baskerville, a new legislator, I think, from Mecklenburg County. And then one's a Republican, one's a Democrat. Hmm. Well, we, I mean, we've done some stories on habitual DWIs down here, so I think it's interesting. And I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe Linda or Billy um, can talk to this more, but I feel like we have a lot of DWI um, cases here and a lot of drunk driving cases maybe because it's the beach. I yeah. can tell you about my case from last uh, last March. I yeah. uh, was just, I was only in the car with the guy. He offered to, ride, to give me a ride home. I thought I was being safe and uh, he got a DUI. I got aiding and abetting. <laughs> How would you get insane. aiding and abetting yeah, good question, riding in huh? the car? Yeah, I know. Right? Then David so, wanted somebody. <laughs> Well, no, I, I had to go to court. I went to court six times because, you know, some people can afford a lawyer to go down there and speak for them every single time. I ended up getting it dismissed, but, you know, still it was a pain. 
I think the point is so that, you know, I mean, if there's a husband and a wife and they're out, they've been out together all night, then they're culpable both, you know, they're both culpable. I think that's what it's for, but most of the people that I've ever heard get it just didn't do anything, you know. I don't really think that's fair, though, because a lot of, t I know someone, um, and I shouldn't give them away, but they actually are in law enforcement, and um, they were with someone who promised that they weren't drinking, and turns out they were, and they got stopped in a DWI checkpoint. Um, so... So did they get a ticket? I don't think so, because they knew each other, because they were all in London. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, every cop I've talked to since then said they would never give somebody a ticket for that, something so stupid, but they're still doing it. Well, you know what, though? I, um, worked with one, a woman, or a man, I shouldn't say, a woman or a man, who, um, <laughs> what, who had a drinking, who really had a drinking problem, and, um, ended up getting help for it, but... This person could put down a lot of alcohol, and this person would also take pills, and I didn't know all that stuff. And so um, this person, like, drove, like, we went out for, like, a casual dinner, like a group of us from work, and um, I wasn't drinking. Like, I'm not a big drinker. And this person got in the car and left, um, went into the median, hit another car head on, and flipped. And that's when we found out that that person was under the influence. Because well, some people are really good at hiding that. You know, yeah. we off we offered to take this person home. We said, we'll give you a ride home. And they were like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I mean, looked us in the eye and said, I'm not drunk. Well, I so wish, I'm, personally yeah. wish there were more ways for you to check what, what you might be under the influence of because people are, you know, on prescription pills and stuff and abusing that and they're so much more reckless than someone who's just been drinking too much. Yeah, you can get a DWI for a whole host of impairments, including prescription drugs. Uh, How do they test for that, though? Uh, they can test for it. In your blood? The, the I guess thing that's with, why they – go ahead. The weirder thing is like people who have diabetic shock and things like that, and they're driving, which does happen. You know, that's yeah. driving while impaired. That's technically illegal. But you don't hear them cracking down on that like someone who might have taken a pill not knowing it would make them absolutely zoned out for that particular you know, session. Mm -hmm. mm, that's well, that's the reason they, you know, most people don't know this, but the, the breathalyzer actually has no, uh, no bearing on the situation except to be uh, one of the ways that they can tell that you are impaired. One of the ways. It's just evidence. It's not actually like a man, like a, if you pass, if you fail that test, you're going to jail. That's not, a, not enough. Most people don't realize that. The roadside sobriety test, however, which is open for, uh, you know, uh, opinion, is actually uh, the, the, the rule of thumb. That's how you go to jail, not the, not the breathalyzer. Well, they're going after a state law. It just passed the House of Representatives in Raleigh today where normally I think it's the state crime lab must test for DWI blood in the city of Charlotte, Raleigh Police Department. It's a certain certification of laboratory. Anyway, the person who tests your blood in a DWI case has to go to court and testify against you, and it's bogging down the system. So now we're going to open it up to any accredited laboratory, which is local hospitals that serve under the Department of Health and Human Services, will be able to draw your blood and test it in the hospital, and it's court admissible against you. Yeah, they're going to make that very easy to draw blood. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And close a defense loophole probably is pretty. It'd well, be fine with me if they tested for pills and everything else. That wouldn't bother me a bit. Because those people yeah. just get away with it. I see crazy drivers all the time, and you can just look at them and tell they're under the influence of something. Yeah, that's true. Oh, well, this is the simple die cut that I was just running, and see yes. if. It, that's all it was, was a, um, a die. But, I mean, we have had really cool ones like little angels and stuff. You can make any shape that that, uh, that you want. We don't make it. You have to order those. But, you know, that's what we've been doing with it. That's so, so cool. You can have a really, really neat business card in a funny shape or something if you wanted it. Wow. How do you get this, like, the shapes for the die cut then? Like, how does that even? Oh, we make the shape, but you can order. They'll put a blade in the shape of anything you want. There's houses out there that'll do it. Huh. It's neato. I hate to see the thing go, but it's going to a good home. The guy was gonna... the guy was in love with it. Really? But yeah, and my brother said, well, if we can get more money than that. I said, no, nah, that kid loves it. Let him have it. Because that's important. Do you find out who the kid is yet? That's funny. Oh, yeah. What is his name? You don't have to tell us if you don't want to. Well, I don't give a crap. 
go get go uh, give him some business. He can make some wedding invitations or something. What's he gonna do? Yeah, like make wedding invitations. Like yeah, what fancy do? stuff that where it matters, and for high dollar lawyers who want their uh, their stationery Im embedded. Now, how's he gonna? How are you gonna move that to hit where he is? <laughs> That's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, better bring fine. a. There's no. It's, the way we got it in here was roll it on pipes, but you have to have uh, pretty much a rollback truck to to haul it. It's 3,500 pounds, so it's a vehicle practically. When's he gonna come get it? I don't know. Sometime this week or next week. Steve, Ooh, maybe we should do a. Maybe we should do a story on you now. Would that be me? neat? Is this the man, the Steve Lusher. I don't I don't know the guy. Steve Lusher. But look at his business card. See how he cut his business card out? He's got oh. his rounded corner on, on two corners. Mm. Where's Fancy his shop? Corners. Somewhere downtown. Hmm. This is so interesting. I could we could do a story on the man who loved his printing press, his ancient printing <laughs> press. That could still be <laughs> better job. I remember when I was a boy. Mm -hmm. Why well, not though. really, Billy? You know that really could be a uh, a good story because, I mean, what's the Brunswick Beacon doing now? <laughs> I think yeah. it's a good story. I'm gonna think that. Is, is, the Brunswick for, uh, Beacon is still in in existence, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. They're just getting all their printing done at, at uh, a a company called Landmark bought it up. Just for those who don't know, my dad started the local paper. But anyway, the uh, the all a big company bought up a bunch of small newspapers and they get all the printing done at the same place. So. Well, I think it would be a, a really good story because, I mean, the Brunswick Beacon used it for how many years? From 1980 something. What used what? That printing. Press. No, they didn't. Well, who no. used it? Oh, Skipper Graphics, my parents' print shop. We oh, used oh, okay, okay. I've Different. been running this thing for 30 years. Different. Oh, okay. <laughs> no one else. No one else cared to figure it out. I thought it was part of the, of the newspaper. No, no, it wasn't. Uh, Dad had a regular offset press and then a web press when he started the Beacon. Such a, it's such a neat craft or art or something unique. Yeah, it's a, I, I guess know. it's an art form at this point. Yeah. It's cool. Um, can I switch gears for one second though? While I still have Kelly on here before he zonks out. Kelly, did that uh, sun tanning bed thing? What's the latest on that? Because didn't you talk about that in your last week's show? Yeah, I followed it. It gets voted on tomorrow. They pushed it today because they took too long on a bill on other stuff. So uh, teenagers under 18 years old would be banned from using tanning salon beds. So parents have parental consent now for, I think, f maybe 14 and up, something like that. And uh, this would just take that choice away from the parents and make it a state you know, prohibition doesn't regulate if they buy one and put it in their home. They can lay out in that as much as they want. So, What do people think about that, though? I mean, is it, is it controversial, or is it, um, or do people feel no, the same? No, Republicans are all on board on it. There's a few people there that are a little bit uh, principled, and they say that this is government kind of telling people what to do, and it's sort of wishy-washy science and stuff. It doesn't really cause cancer and what does. And, the, you know, it's the government intrusion thing has played a little bit of a role. But out of 77 Republicans who will believe that, 2022 will vote no on it, or so, or you know, something like that. So 70 would be in favor of banning tanning beds for minors. Hmm. Yeah. What about tanning sprays? Those Would're are legal. Interested? Those are those would be legal still. See, you don't even know what though is in those tanning sprays. Yeah. Right. I mean. But. I mean, uh, I'm a fan of the spray tan, but I do. Um, you're getting stuff on your body. Like, what are you putting on your body? I have no idea. Well, is it that covered under uh, the FDA or something? I don't know. It should All be. I know is that it makes my skin dark. <laughs> well, if they're spraying something on you, then it's probably protected under the FDA. You don't have yeah. to worry about it. Because they're not going to let them spray, you know, just anything on you. Mm. So, what was the verdict? Wait, Which way Billy, is it smile. Billy? Smile. Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> I, what? I can't even see myself. The shutter speed's not fast <laughs> enough on it. Oh, see, I've been using my the button. Yeah, I, well, I didn't get the button. I never got. Oh, the see, button. I have this button. So, what and is this new new app you guys are playing with? The capture it app. Take, it takes pictures mm -hmm. of the hangout. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. I heard you talking about it earlier. Who developed this thing? I don't know. 
Mm. It's a Google oh, there's thing. A, there's a number count on my icon over there. Yeah, yeah. jury's so, out. I don't know. Jury's still out. Kelly, smile. Oh, come <laughs> on. Help me. <laughs> what? I don't know what I'm doing. I wonder if that's a sound effect that makes, or that is heard over YouTube. Surely it is. It's uh, Let you know you're being photographed is what it does. If we're getting, if I'm getting it, then yeah, I hear the sound. Okay, I think, um, I, I think it's highly annoying. So I wouldn't use it for a real hangout, but you know. Bless you. Thank you. No, Danielle, it was not against the law for minor of other parents' permission if they were between 14 and 18 or 13 and 18 to tan. No, it's not loading on the. The sound's not coming up on the... So, Danielle, if you want to go ahead and tan, you can. Mm -hmm. yeah, what about piercings? I'm getting a little pale there. Like uh, well, piercings don't, don't cause cancer. You're only drilling a hole into your body. That's no, but all. Kelly just said, Kelly just said it's wishy-washy science. Well, from what I understand, tanning beds use ultraviolet light to tan your skin. There are people that, that, that the industry would argue that there are disputed scientific studies. Well, they, they, they argue a dermatologist sun lamp carries more UV than does a professional tanning salon where you can't lay under it for so many minutes by regulation. And they'll say that the rising, the spike in melanoma is in men 50 and over, and they don't use tanning salons. Hmm. So I don't, you know, it's one of those things where conservatives tell me, I ask them, it was a conservative idea, we're saving lives kind of thing. So it's going to go through. Now, what happens in the Senate, I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just so funny that the timing is all kind of really close to a time when a lot of underage people would be tanning, you know, because prom and stuff. and. Mm -hmm. um, and now these, I mean, for us, it's like the Azalea Festival. Like all these girls, you know, tan and their debutante dresses and or their Azalea Bell dresses and stuff like that. So, I tanned when I was a girl, but I do think it changed my skin. I didn't tan a ton, but um, but it was like the popular thing to do in the '90s. And who knows what those beds were like then? But I had like a bunch of, I mean, a bunch of freckles because of it. I was a beach bum. Yeah, we didn't have the beach in the Midwest. Well, we had Coney Island Beach, so. Mm -hmm. We have rivers, but we don't have an actual, like, beach beach. We have river banks. On the banks of the river. What I don't get is that our soldiers in the United States fight for our freedom. Shouldn't we have the right to spray tan or go out to a, you know, place to lay out and get tan or do whatever we want to do? If that's what they're fighting for, and, our freedoms. And that is the debate that they are that a few people are raising, and they can't understand why their colleagues don't see it the way they do. It's a great debate. I think if you're 16, you can make a decision if you want to tan or not. I mean, 14, maybe okay. I don't have a problem. You know, 14, 15. I'm kind of like, well, the 16. My God. They make a lot of restrictions on kids these days, I think. Too many, to be honest. Yeah. I mean... And this idea is coming from the most conservative wings of the socially conservative wings of the Republican Party in North Carolina. That's that's what surprises me. Yeah, it is weird. Here's the thing. The damage to your skin is done before you're 18 years old. And, and that's, the, that, that's the argument. You don't that, know any better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, I mean... Who knew? Yeah, that's a good point, Linda. When I was, uh, when I was three, when I was three living in St. Augustine, I was a little black kid with blonde hair. <laughs> Me too. I was just naked in my underwear all the time, and that's what we did. Nobody thought anything of it. How about those um, the kids who used to put baby oil on in the sun, you know, like instead of using sunscreen, <laughs> yeah. they used to use baby oil? Yeah, like some the the oil. Look at John. He's got a nice tan. Let's make uh, it. It's all from golf. It's all from his cruise. Well, we're done. I mean, we can do I move it over there because we'll be yeah. done. I'm not, we won't be involved with it. 
Okay, I'm gonna go sit at my desk. Move it over. Why don't you take it over onto the glass partition over there, sir? Okay. So what else is in the headlines? Anybody? I haven't watched the news today. I've been in my own little world. In my world, it's just snow, snow, snow. Day and night. I thought tomorrow was spring. Is it? I thought tomorrow was spring. I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm picking my final four brackets right now. Anyway, you guys have a great evening. It's 11 o'clock. I'm going to bed. i got to be at a press conference in the morning, so uh, I'll chat with you maybe tomorrow. See you, Kelly. Good yeah, to meet bye. you. Nice to meet you, too. I love the printing press. All right, see, you. see the rest of you. Bye. Right. Here is, um, I don't know, can you see the, the girl in the middle? Yeah. The picture? Can mm -hmm. you see the blonde hair? <laughs> That's me. With the blonde? Yeah, in my backyard in Miami. Oh, hold on a minute, I gotta... I was probably five. Cute, Linda. Wait, 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 wait for me. But Billy was talking about being the little dark boy with the blonde hair. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was me. Let me see it again. It's right there. I've got technical difficulties. Which one? The blonde. Well, the oh, two the boys on the next right? to me are blonde too, but it's still blurry for me. <clears throat> oh well. It's cute. Yeah, that was actually there. It <laughs> looks kind of frosted. Oh, hey, um, just real quick, while you guys are doing that, Jesse Stockton on YouTube says cancer rates are much higher with tanning beds. Hmm. I'd like to hear why Jesse thinks that or knows that. Did Kelly take off? Yeah. I was going to yeah. show another picture, but I see we're still on the air. He said he had a press <sighs> conference in the morning. Oh, okay. Well, what I'll try to do as soon as the A block is over, I'm going to stop the broadcast and then I'm going to cut something from Billy's printing press and also from Kelly's stuff. It's cool. Are you going to cry when you give it over a little bit? <laughs> no, as long as I can go see it, I'll be all right. <laughs> and he'll be running and he'll probably take better care of it than it was he, than you know, than it was here. Where was it anyway? Just in your parents' shop? Yeah, this is I'm up at the print shop. It was right where it is. It's been right there since they put it there. Nobody can move it. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. <clears throat> if the building fell down, that'd be the safest place. Did they see what they wanted? Oh, there's Stacy finally. Yeah. Yeah, what up? Stacy feels like who? Whatever. Yeah. Like massage. Oh. Linda, did you get your cookies today? Yes, ma'am. Here, here they are. Not answering that. <laughs> they they kind of crumble very very easily. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> very good. Okay, so what's with all the little cameras? Really come up. Where you at? The capture app. It takes pictures of the hand. I just took a picture of you. And Anthony took a picture of me. Oh, weird. You can, like, actually... That's kind of neat.
But then what does it do? It just saves it as a JPEG? It makes an album, and then you click on it, and then anyone in the Hangout can see it. So you click on the little camera, and it should go... Let me see. Yeah, you click on the little the pictures, mm -hmm. and it loads the album, so you can see it. Oh, wow. So you don't have to... But you know what, though? That means you don't have to do an event. Nope. Oh, that's kind of neat, though. I do like that. It's easy. Sweet. Uh oh, come on. What you been up to, Stacy? Not much. Hanging out. You like me? No! Whoa! What just happened? <laughs> Is that new camera feature thing? Anthony, unmute the feed. This dude. He's not in there. We're new. Yes, I am. This is WECT News at 11. Staggered schedules. Thousands of families in Brunswick County will have to adjust to a new schedule next year. The school board is putting classes back on the staggered schedule. The board says it'll save about a million dollars, and that money will go towards school security. Leaders say the staggered schedule did have support when the board tried it two years ago. Well, basically, it was about 1,800 were in favor of keeping the staggered start, and 1,100 uh, wanted to go back to a single bell. The board plans to survey every parent with a child in the schools to see which schedule they prefer. The goal is for the board to make a decision by May's meeting. There's a short-term solution tonight to overcrowding problems at Wrightsville Beach Elementary School. They'll keep using two classrooms at a nearby church and use two new mobile units on the school site. This plan will be used for three years. Parents say they're glad there's a short-term plan in place. We are very, very relieved uh, and eager to work with the school board going forward to help them with the other challenges they have, particularly the bond referendum that's coming up. Wrightsville Beach Elementary is on a list to be renovated if the district can get a bond referendum on the ballot. Brand new at 11, throwing out teacher tenure. A powerful state senator wants to get rid of tenure and instead <laughs> pay teachers based on their performance. WECT's Ben Powell live at Coddington Elementary with how the bill would affect our local teachers. Ben? <laughs> well, Dan, not only can you increase salaries and performance evaluations change, oh, but so could the Common Core curriculum and the end of year testing program. Under the new plan, experienced, well performing teachers could be put on oh, a no, contract, no, while less experienced teachers down. who are not performing up to standard Probably would be placed on shorter deals. The bill allows for the continued development of pay for performance rules that were put in place during the last legislative session. Senator Berger says the idea is to have incentives in place for teachers who excel as much as possible. John Welmers with the New Hanover County School Board says the proposed bill would be complete, would completely change the way they do business. Tenure has been a right that teachers have earned in this state for many years. Uh, across the country it's been a right. And teachers have worked hard to gain career status in North Carolina and maintain it. And so now this change in the way we do contracts, the way we contract with teachers and evaluate them, it is going to impact them greatly. Now the bill is expected to be heard sometime next month, and if all goes according to plan, we could see these changes go into the effect, go into effect by the end of the 2014 school year. Reporting live in New Hanover County, Ben Powell, WECT News. Whiteville High School was placed on lockdown after police say three men came on campus with a gun, showing it to a few students. Police eventually found the suspects at a tattoo parlor on Madison Street. They now face several charges, including bringing a gun on a school campus. No one was hurt. We're working to get you their names and pictures. Now stay with WECT and WECT.com for updates as we get them. North Carolina's governor is taking steps to protect students from violence. Governor Pat McCrory wants to create a center for safer schools. It will work to find ways to prevent violence. Community forums will be held across the state to hear from parents, students, and teachers. Just into our newsroom and brand new tonight at 11. Burned out, a van being used by the Wilmington Police Department's troubled vice and narcotics unit has caught fire. And the fire department thinks it was intentionally set. The van was going to be used in an undercover operation. Officials wouldn't say what kind. 
It was found at the Senior Center's parking lot on Shipyard Boulevard and South College Road, directly across the street from the WPD's Southeast Command Center. Now, the Vice and Narcotics Union is uh, being investigated by the SBI. Every member of the unit involved in a botched prostitution sting was reassigned by the police chief. More new details tonight. Another man suing former Elmo voice man Kevin Clash for sexual abuse. Sheldon Stevens is 24, says he started a sexual relationship with Clash when he was 16. Stevens' lawyer filed a lawsuit against Clash in federal court, accusing him of underage sex and drug use. Stevens says he was motivated to come forward after realizing the influence Elmo has over his young nieces. It just concerned me inside because I knew the pain that I was suffering when I was 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And uh, when I start to realize my nieces were idolizing this character, it just disgusted me inside because I knew what had, had happened to me. Stevens says the relationship ended mutually a couple of years ago. Three other men are also suing Clash over claims of underage sex. An attorney for Clash released this statement today saying Stevens admitted in writing that he, quote, he had an adult consensual relationship with Mr. Clash, who continues to deny any wrongdoing, and we intend to defend this case forcefully, end quote. Coming up, more forced federal spending cuts, this time affecting employees with the Defense Department. Find out how much time they're being ordered to take off without pay. But first, new developments tonight in that explosion that killed eight Marines from Camp Lejeune. Find out what the Pentagon is suspending, at least for now. Right now, let's check in with First Alert Meteorologist Eric Davis with a chillier forecast. Eric? Yeah, a chilly morning commute it looks like out there. Shouldn't have many issues, though, out on the roadways. Just make sure you grab that coat as you head out the door because temperatures will be in the 40s as you wake up. Mostly clear to partly cloudy skies early in the day, but it does appear we're going to have more clouds as we head into the afternoon hours. Maybe even the potential for some spotty showers out there for your drive home. Very light, though. Uh, rainfall totals less than a tenth of an inch, but clouds on the increase. High temperatures, though, only in the 50s. And you better get used to the 50s. There's going to be a lot of them in the extended forecast. Let's take a look at some forecasts for select cities over the next few days. You can see Warsaw, 57 on Wednesday, 48 on Thursday, and highs in the 50s in Whiteville as well. We'll have the complete first alert forecast coming up. So let's take a look at tonight's Mega Million numbers. We've got 3, 37, 6, 21, 14, the Mega Ball 35, and the Mega Plier 3. One more time, 3, 37, 6, 21, 14, Mega Ball 35, and the Mega Plier is 3. Good luck. You want to know something that's weird? Hmm. I um, kicked Michelle Lee out, which was our laptop. Yeah. And the broadcast is still going. Yeah, because you're here. I Michelle, guess, but I didn't, know it, I didn't know I read it like that. There are a lot of things that I discover like every day that I'm like. Hmm. That could be an update, though. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Definitely like that because it's helpful for me. But like last night, I couldn't remember where I started the feed, and that was problematic because I started the feed from my desktop, and then when I went into the studio, I was making the switches there. It, not, but I, but it wasn't showing up on YouTube because it started here. That, that makes sense. Anyway, um, you guys want to wrap it up? Billy, what else are you going to tell us about your printing press? Oh, see, so muted. I think I've uh, said everything. Stacy never got to see it. Thomas just showed up. Yeah, you guys missed it. Did you guys see it on YouTube? No, just a little bit. Billy, how much do those things roughly cost? I mean, not to be too personal. So if oh, this one? I don't know. You can. It depends on the condition. We could only get about 500 bucks out of this thing. And that's a shame. But uh, if they're in really good condition, you can get plenty more. It's amazing. It's really mm -hmm. neat. Well, hold on a minute and I'll crank it back up. How long can it run? How long? What do you mean? I mean, like, if you want, can it do, like, regular work, like a regular workload? Or is it yep. like, oh, we got to be delicate with it because it's like made in 1912? No, hell no. That's more durable than anything else. It's made in 1912. <laughs> 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 you could you could run the heck out of it. No, it'll it'll uh it'll run forever. 
Uh, you have, I mean, you run out of paper, you have to stack more paper in it. T News at 11. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Now, Vince is in here, by the way. Um, Vince also left a message, because um, I don't think his webcam's up. But it was kind of neat. He said, let me find it. Oh, shoot, I lost it. Vince, what did you say? Hmm, stand by. It was about your printing press. Oh, well, see, so you're going to have to give it a little... Here, I'll show you. Oh, Vince said, in our virtual age of blogs and e-readers, one man is investing in old-school operations. There's your lead. <laughs> That's what you're... <laughs> I thought that was good. And he spelled lead right. Which is interesting. There she goes. I'm waiting for steam to come out of it somewhere. He's shoveling coal in there. What did you say, Stacy? I feel like he should. I feel like he should be shoveling coal in there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. It does look like a steam engine, doesn't it? It has a lot of the same parts from the same era. Yeah, it does. It, it um, looks like a engine. So what's this running off of? Uh, 220. What does that mean? Oh. Uh, you plug it in. You plug it in? Electricity. <laughs> yeah. He's using I a motor. At the time, yeah, it has a motor. Right? You can see it on the side. Oh, the oh okay, yeah, yeah. I don't see it. The Where? Belt. See the big belt see, going around see the this big wheel? Thing? And the motor's it's down in there. It's the bo bottom right. That that little yeah, but it, I, but it didn't come with a plug in, so how does that work? <laughs> sure, it did. There was what? electricity in 1912. There was electricity in 1912. But it had a plug in? Well, I probably didn't look like our plug ins. I mean, it's because uh, it, there, were, there weren't any standards it. back then. But uh, it's running off a of 220. See the big motor right here in the belt? Yeah. I'm going to load some more paper on it. <clears throat> Here's my question. What can I get out of it for free before you sell it? I don't know. What do you want? Business. <laughs> Business cards. You can, have all these, you can have all these blue cards with the centers punched out. Nice. That's exactly <laughs> what I wanted. I have a lot of that diploma-sized paper. Will it take that? <clears throat> Not diploma. Um, I don't know what it's called. Well, it'll take any size sheet. You just have to cut it or set it up for the size sheet. Mm -hmm. There's no. Uh, I mean, there's a limit. But... I can, I, Jim, <laughs> Billy's going to be going downtown just to go see his machine. I know you're going to miss it. So did you sell it, Billy? Yeah. You know I am. Yeah. Sold it to somebody in Wilmington, to my downtown Wilmington. What's the person's name? Steve, uh, what was it? Lusher. Lusher, yeah. Hmm. Young guy. Actually, I was going to say, I know someone you could sell it to, but never mind. She sold... So here I'm going to turn on the vacuum and it'll grab a sheet, take it down. You can hear the impression because it's heavy. You hear that? I don't know how well you can hear it, but it rattles the floor. Mm -hmm. It sounds a bit like a steamship. Looks like a big cyclops. Well, there's a vacuum pump built in. You can hear that, right? Yeah, it kind of makes it sound like a, like a steam train. That sounds like has, a steam train. Well, yeah. it has to blow the paper apart, and it has to suck it to hold it to take it down there, and then it has to suck it back off of there. So... A lot of sucking and blowing. Uh oh. 
You gotta be careful around that thing. I guess. Man. Oh yeah, this is definitely not OSHA approved. Oh no. Yeah, that's, you'll that's lose an arm in a second. Industrial not revolution. Not a finger. You'll lose a whole. You'll lose a whole arm. <laughs> that's why I'm thinking you shouldn't be talking to us while you do this. Well, luckily he's on wireless headphones, so. I'm gonna put my head in it. Really, <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> My God, that thing's about as heavy as my grandma's car. I'll uh, I'll walk you over there around it. That's about thirty-five hundred. That's a heavy car. It's gotta say, it got quiet. Where did it go? I bet they had one of these in the basement of Downton Abbey. <laughs> so, what? Can this thing print about anything? Or does it just cut? Um, it'll, well, it was designed to print, but um, a lot of people use it for die cutting. You can see the die down inside the, when it comes back. You see the die on the, on the wooden board? Yeah. Yeah. It ran out of paper right now, but um, it grabs the sheet, takes it down there, the die stamps it, and then it pulls it off. But people get a kick out of this part up here. Neato. And it has a foot brake. Can it be changed for length like the newspaper? It's Can it be what? Cool. Changed for what? Changed to newspaper. Like the size of like a regular the New York Post or the Times or whatever, regular size of paper. A tabloid size. Newspapers yeah. are printed on a web press. They come off of a roll. And it's just one continuous sheet that gets chopped at the last minute. This is a, this is a single sheet, sheet fed. But it would go up to... Uh, the thin paper is hard to run on it, actually. It's easier to run the card stock. Anyway, it's cool. So, did anyone see Vince's uh, text message? Let's know about good network of radio stations if the power goes out. <laughs> power goes out, I'm like, okay, the power's out. Um. It's, most stations have a backup generator. So if the main feed, if all the power goes out, they have um, usually have a backup battery. But if your antenna, if your antenna gets knocked out, then you're kind of screwed. Look, John showing pictures from his cruise. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You were kidding, right? I mean, why was the cruise ship on there? Um, well, John went on a carnival cruise, and it so happened while John was gone, a carnival cruise ship had a power outage. Uh, seems like there's all those cruise ships. 
yeah. are having well, issues. So far, it appears only to be Carnival and their subsidiaries having the trouble. Then that's a huge battle over there, homie. Alright, I'm, I'm going in. Why can't someone just get to their destination and just buy a soda? Whatever, dude. I want a soda machine in my car. That'd be awesome. Vince, if you're talking about whether or not uh, that a person could switch over to Fox News radio station, I don't think they do that. And the ra regular radio stations would still be transmitting and you would just have to have a radio with batteries in it. Yeah. yeah Where, it, it defeats the purpose. Where were those taxis at with the vending machines? Probably New York. Doesn't that kind of go against everything that they're trying to do with banning oh. soda? And oh, that, re that got struck down by the court. Oh, did it? Did I miss yeah. all that? Yeah, the I day before. So the, today it's not even funny. Yeah, the day before the law was supposed to go into effect, the New York Supreme Court said, nope. Must be a slow news hour, girl. And it's then, all then, into basket. Well, and then the taxi the, cab companies yeah. gave New York a big old F you, huh? Yep. Oh, she's cute. I am going to McDonald's. If you guys are still on when I get there, I'll pull it up. I'll, I'll take a, a, a hot fudge sundae, please. All right, you got it. Yeah. You, you going, are you going to my McDonald's right here? On no, the corner of my I'm, street? Damn it. I'm <laughs> See you in a little bit. Actually, I think I'm going to call it a night, too. I got uh, lots of client work to get done. Unfortunately, it's all on consignment, sort of. I need clients with money. It's still snowing out here. I can't believe this. That's what you get living up in the Rochester. <laughs> Oh, I'm up in Steventown. Oh, right? Rensselaer. Yeah, Rensselaer, there you go. Oh, yeah, it's a shame. Is there a good website for public determinations on class action lawsuits? I'm sorry, what? Is there, um, websites for public access? For class action lawsuits, the determinations that anybody can see public like if it's, a, if it's public records, probably yes. Where? I have no idea. Google court records, the county where it's taking place, and see if you can find out. Keeps leading me back to the same thing that, you know, I know when it started, da 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 da, but it doesn't show an update. Then it's probably not in there. What's up now? What? Anthony was asking what the heck you're talking about, Robin. Uh, a class action lawsuit, like the determination or the litigations, anything the public can see. Um, the, you uh, know, like uh, a website. Well, all you have to really do is enter the Joan v. Joan, like that. Or the case index number, that probably yeah. helps you. But it stops showing updates after a certain date, and they never, on every account, it just, like, it's, you have, like, a dead hit. Call like, the court. Pardon? Call the court. Just find a telephone number that's associated with it, call the court, say I have a case number, blah, blah, blah. I just need to get an update on it. If they ask who you are, just say, I'm uh, writing a report for blah, 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 you know, a, I'm a reporter. Associated with Fox News, Google Hangouts, or something. I don't know. Make something. Well, what's going on is I just saw on Google my lawyer giving an interview to a station 
without even calling us to tell us what it is. Damn. And I'm just wondering, he knows, of course, but the people that are in this, we're not being told anything. Hmm. We all had to see our own lawyer on television without even our permission or anything. Quick question. Did Billy leave, I guess? He did. Yes. Okay, he's sorry. I had to, to talk the, about some news stuff. He's going to McDonald's, and he's not going to share. Oh, that's not cool. That's well, what we, said. we saw people on YouTube, but I actually need to end the broadcast so I can start ingesting it. So, um... Sorry. Um... But I do want to say hi to Joseph and Frank and always pro. I don't know who that is. <laughs> um, and Jesse. I don't know if Jesse's still on there. So. And Actually, probably, probably my mom. Is Jesse you, Thomas? Yeah, he's one of my clients. I won. Ah. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> nice. I was uploading YouTube videos and stuff. <laughs> I was like, okay. Oh, it's like, that, that grammar seems familiar. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so I ha I'm sorry, but I have to end the broadcast. We still have a few viewers in there, it looks like, but um, get to you. So thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight on YouTube. It was awesome. We liked thank it. You. Bye.